Episode 20, Reverberations in Halloween. Loneliness makes you reckon with yourself in ways you never anticipated, I thought to myself. Life had its ways of presenting sudden twists and turns. Just like my relationship with Arnold, my boyfriend of a year. It was, perhaps, our first real argument, the kind that leaves a sting. We yelled, we cried, and in my frustration, I packed my bags and stormed out. Arnold insisted that I stay, suggested he'd sleep on the couch, but my anger pushed me further away. I soon found myself on a deserted road with no destination in mind. The first accommodation I found was an old inn called, Hallow Inn. It looked dilapidated from the outside, but I wasn't seeking comfort, just solace. The parking area was devoid of any cars, which was strange but comforting in a way. The reception area was empty. The flickering bulb overhead illuminated a tarnished brass bell that I rang. A disheveled man appeared behind the desk, startling me. He quoted a surprisingly low price for the night. Handing me the key to room 66, he ominously advised, keep your doors locked, and ignore any strange noises after dark. His peculiar warning made me feel uneasy, but my exhaustion got the best of me. As I walked to my room, I noticed bizarre stains on the walls and floor. Could they be blood, I wondered, then quickly dismissed the thought as overreaction. The room, as expected, was old and dusty. It was late, and my ordeal had left me drained. As much as I cringed at the thought of the possibly unwashed sheets, sleep was my primary concern. During the night, I woke up to strange, incessant whispering that seemed to be coming from within the room. I could feel a sudden chill, and then something like an icy hand grazed my arm. The whispers grew louder, leave or you'll lose everything. In a panic, I turned on the light, but there was nothing there. A horrifying dread had filled the room, yet the idea of venturing out into the unknown night seemed more dangerous. The whispers continued, and images of an empty, desolate life swarmed my mind. I mustered up courage and decided to flee. As I turned the doorknob, the morning sunlight spilled into the room, seeming almost unnatural after the tormenting night. I hurriedly got into my car, intending to call Arnold and apologize. But his contact was gone. His pictures, texts, everything was erased from my phone. As I reached our shared apartment, his belongings were missing, and all the pictures that were once of us together only had me in them. I frantically called my friends and family, only to hear them deny any knowledge of Arnold. I was left in disbelief, and an unnerving dread settled in me. Determined to find answers, I returned to the Hallow Inn, but all that remained was an abandoned, decaying building. A sinking feeling overwhelmed me as I realized I was the only one who remembered Arnold. I didn't know how these strange events were connected, but I was sure they were. My resolve to uncover the secrets of the Halloween and find Arnold was stronger than ever. As I looked at the ring he'd given me, I knew he existed, and somewhere out there, he needed me. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but I was ready to fight, for him and for us. The search was far from over, and the tale of the Halloween was just beginning.